Hello friends, this is my second video in the chest imaging series. In the previous video, we had discussed about the radiological anatomy of chest radiograph. Now is the time to look at the projections. So, in this video, I'll be discussing about the views of projections performed commonly for chest radiographs and brief you upon the technical aspects as well as patient positioning and finally add a note on the clinical implication of each view in case scenarios. So myself, Dr. Alina Elizabeth Andrews, currently doing residency in radio diagnosis in Kerala. So let's begin. So let's look at the projections in chest radiograph. They include the frontal, the lateral, the lateral decubitus, the lordotic, the oblique and the paired inspiratory expiratory films. Within the frontal projection, you have two subtypes, which is the PA known as posterior anterior and the AP known as the andro posterior. Before going to further details, we should know what the projections mean. By projection, we mean the relation of the x-ray beam with respect to the patient. So we shall see one by one and know them in detail. First, about the frontal projection. In frontal PA projection, we have the x-ray tube here, the patient here and the x-ray film or the image receptor here. We have the x-ray beams emitted from the x-ray tube entering the posterior aspect of the patient's chest and exiting by the anterior aspect of the patient's chest hitting against the image receptor kept touching the patient's anterior aspect of the chest. This is how the chest radiograph in a PA projection looks like. Now coming to the second subtype of frontal projection known as AP or andro posterior projection. Here again you got the x-ray tube here, you have the patient here and the image receptor here. The beam from the x-ray tube first encounters the anterior aspect of the patient's chest and exits via the posterior aspect of the patient's chest to hit against the image receptor kept touching the posterior aspect of the patient's chest. This is how the chest radiograph in AP projection looks like. So one may naturally wonder what possible difference can AP and a PA film look like. We shall discuss them in detail. In the coming slides, I'll be talking about the major differences between AP and PA films and why PA film is preferred over the AP radiographs. So given before you are two sets of film, one on the right is the AP view and one on the left is the PA view. If you observe carefully, you can see the heart in AP view appears enlarged as compared to heart in the PA view. That is, heart and the mediastinum will appear magnified in an AP radiograph. Why the magnification? Given before you is an image of a light bulb here, two fingers here, and the shadow on the wall. So, what's the striking difference between the upper one and the lower one? You can see as the distance between the fingers or the object to be imaged increases from the structure which captures its shadow or its image, the image formed increases in size. So, when the distance between the object to be imaged and the structure that captures its image, here shadow, that is the wall uh, which captures its shadow, decreases, the image appears less magnified. The same rule applies to the radiograph. So in the given image, this is a PA projection and this is an AP projection. You can see that the heart, which is a relatively an anterior structure in the mediastinum, is closer to the image receptor in PA, whereas heart which is relatively an anterior structure in the mediastinum is farther away from the image receptor in AP radiograph. Thus, you can note the size difference of the image formed. So one may wonder, what is the problem with magnified radiograph? You must 
never ever comment on the heart size, the cardiac size on an AP film. If you were to compare AP and PA projection of chest of a same person, you can observe that the cardiac size appears enlarged in AP radiograph. So it will lead to you spuriously diagnosing cardiomegaly in relatively normal patient. So never ever comment on the cardiac size in the frontal AP radiograph. Coming to the second difference between AP and PE view. In AP view, you can see the scapula overlying the lung fields, obscuring greater part of lung fields. Whereas in PE radiograph, due to the inherent positioning, you can ask the patient to rotate the shoulder and can project the scapula out of the lung fields. So less of the lung fields is obscured by scapula. Now, the third difference between AP and PA projection can be made out by looking at the clavicles closely. In AP radiograph, the clavicle appears to be horizontal and slightly at a higher level. So you can compare the AP and PA. In PA, the clavicle appears more obliquely oriented and it's slightly at a lower level as compared to the AP radiographs. Now, the fourth difference between AP and PA projection would be about the lung fields. This is the AP, this is the PA. You can see that the lung fields are appearing smaller and more hazy, whereas the lung fields in PA radiograph is appearing sharp and appears to have more preserved volume. This is because AP radiograph is usually done in a supine or recumbent position. In such cases, the diaphragm with the viscera pushes up the lung and compresses it and gives an appearance of decreased lung volume. Now coming to the fifth difference between AP and PA projection. Here, by looking at the lower cervical vertebra, you can see that in AP radiograph, the disc spaces appearing loosened are seen more prominent. Whereas in PA radiograph, it is the posterior elements, I'm marking it out here, the spinous process with the neural arches of the lower cervical vertebra that is appearing more prominent. So this is yet another difference. Thus, we have discussed about the frontal projection. Now going to the next projection, which is the lateral view. So as you can see in the figure, the x-ray beam from the x-ray tube is entering from one side of the patient's body and exiting from the other side of the patient's body to hit against the image receptor kept in close contact with one of the sides of the patient's body. So this is the lateral projection. So there are two types of lateral projection, right lateral and left lateral. Right lateral means the right side of the chest is touching the image receptor or film or cassette. Whereas in the left lateral, it is the left side of the chest which is touching the image receptor cassette or the film. So this is the view of lateral chest radiograph. Now coming to the next projection which is the lateral decubitus projection. Here again as the name implies, the patient is lying down. Decubitus means lying down. Lateral means on the side. You can see the horizontal table here. The patient is lying down with one side against the table and the image receptor, that is the film, is kept touching in contact with the posterior aspect of the patient's chest. So we need to know why do we need lateral decubitus projection. It is to detect air or water within the pleural cavity. Water within the pleural cavity is known as pleural effusion. So we know that fluid within the radiograph gives it a radiodense appearance. So sometimes we need to know or differentiate between free and loculated effusion. There comes the role of lateral decubitus position. So by keeping the patient dependent on one position, we know that fluid, water being heavier, will always accumulate in the dependent position. Similarly, you can see in the figure with right pleural effusion, you can see with the lateral decubitus position, the fluid accumulating within the dependent position forming a level. And you can see part of it entering the minor fissure. If it were a loculated effusion, you do not expect 
such change or shift in the position of the fluid. Coming to the second indication, to differentiate between effusion and parenchymal opacity. Given in front of you a few radiographs. On left, in this frontal projection, you can see opacity in bilateral lower lung zones. You're confused, is it due to parenchymal opacity such as consolidation or is it due to subpulmonic pleural effusion? What do you do now? Go for a lateral decubitus position. If it is fluid, it will show shift in position, accumulate in the dependent portion forming a level. This will not be obeyed by consolidation or any parenchymal opacity. You can see here in this right lateral decubitus, the fluid has shifted and accumulated in the dependent position forming a level on the right side as well as on the left side. Whereas in this left lateral decubitus position, you can again see the fluid has shifted, accumulated in the dependent position forming a level both in the right and the left pleural cavity. Now another indication would be to detect subtle pneumothorax. We know that the classic radiograph to diagnose pneumothorax would be frontal erect projection. But in severely ill patient who cannot maintain upright erect position, you may go for lateral decubitus position. Supine films also shows evidence of pneumothorax but the signs would be subtle it is very difficult to pick up in the image given to you you can see air fluid level this is indication of hydro pneumothorax the third indication where the lateral decubitus film appears to help is to detect air trapping air trapping can provide subtle clues to underlying lung disease it is applicable both in pediatrics as well as adults in pediatrics, air trapping can be seen in cases of intrabronchial foreign body obstruction. Whereas air trapping is a feature of many of the interstitial lung disease in adults. So given to you in this frontal projection, you can see the left lung is appearing more loosened. The principle behind in detecting air trapping is that in lateral decubitus position, when the patient lies on one side, that lung fields are compressed. So, radiologically, it should appear smaller and denser. If it fails to do so, it is pathological. So, in the given image, you can see that the right lung in the right lateral decubitus position appears smaller and denser, right? Whereas, in left lateral decubitus position, the left lung fails to show any such change. So this gives a clue to air trapping. Thus, we have covered the frontal, the lateral and lateral decubitus projections. Now going to the next projection called lordotic projection. In the image given to you, you can see the x-ray tube here, you can see the patient positioned here and here you can see the image receptor. So as it is evident from the film, here the patient may be positioned facing the x-ray tube or can be positioned facing away from x-ray tube. But the important point is that the patient should be leaning against the image receptor forming approximately about 30 to 40 degree angulation. And the x-ray beam from the x-ray tube strikes straight across the image receptor at 90 degree. How does the film look like? You can see in the lodotic projection, the clavicle is projected well above the lung apex. So this projection is mainly indicated to detect lung apex lesions. You have the PA film for comparison here. You can see the clavicles cutting across the upper lung fields. Another use of lodotic projection is to diagnose the middle lobe collapse or consolidation. In the figure given, you can see the triangular radiodense opacity abutting the cardiac shadow. This is a case of middle lobe collapse. Thus, we have covered the frontal projection, the lateral projection, the lateral decubitus projection, the lodotic projection. Now, moving over to the obliques. So, this is how oblique radiographs are taken. You can see in this figure, you have the patient here. 
you have the image receptor here. The patient is facing the image receptor and observe that the left anterior aspect of the patient's chest is touching against the cassette. This is known as LAO or left anterior oblique. Whereas in this figure, this again is the patient. This is the image receptor and you have the patient looking at the image receptor with the right anterior aspect of the patient's chest touching against the cassette forming the RAO or right anterior oblique projection. Similarly, you can also go for LPO and RPO, left posterior and right posterior oblique projection with corresponding sides touching the cassette. So we have covered the frontal, the lateral, the lateral decubitus, the lordotic and the oblique. Now coming to the final topic, which is the paired inspiratory expiratory radiogram. So given to you are two radiographs. One on the left, you can see that the lung fields appear relatively preserved in volume. How do I say that? You can see the 10th posterior rib cutting across the dome of the diaphragm. Whereas on this side, you can see the lung volumes appear relatively smaller. You can only see the eighth rib cutting across the dome of the diaphragm. So this is a film taken in inspiration and this is the film taken in expiration. We know the standard rule is to go for chest frontal projection in adequate good inspiration. But we prefer additional expiratory views in three cases. These are in cases of pneumothorax to assess diaphragmatic movement and to detect intrabronchial foreign bodies. So the principle behind this, during expiration, visceral and parietal pleura separates out. The pleural cavity expands, it compresses the lung. So any minimal volume of air within the pleural cavity stands out. Now for diaphragmatic movement, you're getting paired views of inspiration and expiration. You have to look for the change or shift in the position of the diaphragm. Again, for intrabronchial foreign bodies, you know that if the foreign body occludes a bronchus, there would be air trapping. So during expiration, the trapped lung segment still remains same, still remains loosened. So it will help us in picking up air trapping caused by intrabronchial foreign bodies. So friends, that's all about projections. In this video, I have discussed about various projections used for chest radiograph. The standard projection for chest radiograph is the frontal posterior anterior or the PA view. I've discussed about the differentiating features between AP and PA views and remember never to comment on the heart size in frontal AP projection because the heart will appear magnified. I have also discussed about the additional or the supplementary views of chest radiograph and the specific condition each one of them will help us in diagnosing a clinical condition. I hope that's clear. Thank you all.